Growth is part of the engine that sustains the global economy. Thinking about poverty reduction requires thinking about economic growth and how to achieve that. It's not just about taking oil or gold out of the ground, but growth that transforms an economy and results in, in kind of jobs and livelihoods for all. It is very important to focus on eight or ten very, very fundamental indicators that we accept as universal human rights that everybody should have. I work in one of the poorest countries in the world, in Sierra Leone, and they still have a long way to go to achieve the basic targets in terms of maternal mortality and education, which are part of the Millennium Development Goals. I think what's effective about them is that they act as focal points. They make you think about child poverty or gender empowerment. They make you think about things that matter. The next Millennium Development Goals in the post-2015 framework Economic development is absolutely key, but inclusive growth, that's the real difference. Inclusive growth is the fundamental issue now, because that is how you fight poverty. Development is freedom of being able to spend your discretionary income. Whatever development has taken place, that does not guarantee inclusion of all marginalised and everybody. We need to keep focusing on poverty reduction. We need to focus on increasing the incomes of poor people. Very little has been done on the implications of living in fear or living in a hopelessness situation. The most important thing for India is educating and skilling its young population and also making sure that they have opportunities. We no longer see growth as a market alternative or government-led. It's precisely how the two work together. Efficiencies within the financial sector and supporting the growth performance I think is another area of, uh, of challenge if we are going to look for sustainable growth, sustainable development. Countries that open up to foreign firms are able to capitalize on foreign technologies. We have to think in terms of how we create the conditions for businesses to grow. It's really businesses which grow rather than politicians who decide whether firms grow or not. I think there's been a late awakening to the importance of energy because it is sort of fundamental to productivity and growth. Urbanization and growth um, are all uh, very closely associated. Urbanization in a lot of poor countries has gone wrong. Fortunately, most of these countries are only about one third of the way through the cities they'll have in 30 years' time. A lot of African countries are looking to become middle-income countries. That's the goal that they're really aiming for. How should we understand what are our targets for 15 years, but also understanding the mechanisms that actually make actions succeed? How to do that is a big question. But it's a big question, I think, that doesn't have a big answer. It has lots of little answers. This is not a time for anybody to be complacent. But at the same time, it's a time that we've got now to convince everybody who's a skeptic that actually collective action in development does, does work. Growth matters. Without it, in low-income countries, the ordinary people stay poor. You cannot redistribute yourself into prosperity if the average stays poor. Growth is the process by which ordinary people climb out of poverty. Not simply what governments can do, but what business can do as well. And what together we can do to create wealth sustainably, fairly, to create a just society and a sustainable one.